With good cause, large-scale strategy games are often accused of becoming spreadsheets, with no emotion or backstory behind your decisions, just cold, hard math. And without much by way of flavorful writing or a sense of identity of its own, Galactic Civilizations IV quickly fell into that category. The core mechanics might be okay, but there's simply nothing beyond that to make this game of interstellar conquest stand out or make it feel meaningful, and the gameplay variety wasn't enough to make up for that absence. After just a couple of games, you'll likely have seen everything it has to offer more than once, and outside of a few good ideas that could use some more polish, there's precious little here that we haven't seen done better elsewhere before. Upon hitting the new game button, you'll be greeted with a generous selection of nicely animated species both familiar and original to the series. Each possess customizable traits that dictate the style of play they lend themselves to, or you can build your own from scratch. And of course, there are ample options for customizing your galaxy. Once the game begins, there's immediately a problem. Readability. There's a lot of information to process and you need to constantly zoom in and out to properly see what's there. Even once you're familiar with its quirks, it can still be an unclear mess, more than what's usually expected in this information-heavy genre. You can anticipate spending a lot of time combing through tooltips. More than anything else, the name of the game in Galactic Civilizations IV is Land Grab. You'll build star bases and colonize planets, gradually expanding your sphere of influence across the galaxy map. As you come into contact with other empires, you'll use the resources and territories you've amassed to overcome them, whether through peaceful means or hostile takeovers. But no matter what, getting there first and staking your claim is key. There's no other way to keep up with others. No matter how much you micromanage, building tall and specializing on just a few core worlds simply cannot compare. So much of Galciv 4's systems rely heavily on mass territory control that trying any other playstyle just feels wrong, and the AI players will immediately snap up anything that you don't. If it worked as intended, Galciv 4's sector systems would mean there's a lot of territory to cover. Maps are spread out into multiple sectors, each of which can potentially be as large as entire games of Galciv 3. But while Stardock says the goal of this was to keep there from being too many dead tiles on a map, it's had the opposite effect. Now there's vast stretches of empty space in multiple sectors instead, and because researching how to travel between sectors is a low-tier tech, it only has a minor impact on letting you build in peace in the early game. By contrast, the new Core World system works a lot better. Here, you don't have to babysit every backwater planet you inevitably gain control of, you only have to directly manage the core worlds where you choose to install governors. Less desirable planets remain as colonies and will feed their resources to the closest core. There's still a lot of maintenance and busy work in running an empire, but this is a good change to streamline it somewhat. Combat is simply a matter of building fleets and then moving them into the same tile as an enemy, and then sitting back and watching while the game produces results. Your tactics begin and end with managing your empire to produce the right ships and deploying them when and where needed. That's fine, as this is a strategy game rather than a tactical one, but considering the impressive ship editor, it just feels like a missed opportunity. Fleets can also be commanded to besiege planets, and if they aren't defeated by another fleet within a few turns, the planet is captured. But unless you're attacking a core world, all you need to flip a colony to your side is a single ship. That makes every single ship, big or small, a threat, or an annoyance at least. As such, Wars in Galactic Civilizations IV are an endless game of whack-a-mole. You'll be frantically trying to deploy enough fleets and hopefully have enough sensor coverage to stop every single ship from getting past your front line. And there's a huge amount of tedious trawling through vast sectors of space until all opposition is squashed. Sectors also don't change this dynamic, as there's no way to blockade access between them. It just means more space and battlefronts to cover. Many of the mechanical systems in Galciv 4 feel underdeveloped or poorly balanced. Like the sectors, a lot of this certainly seemed like a good idea on paper, but the execution feels lacking. For instance, every unit of population in your empire is represented by a citizen with an array of stats. 
but actually engaging with them and trying to appease them is tedious and the rewards for doing so offer so little benefit that the process feels pointless. Likewise, galactic challenges are events you can trigger which can reward you with significant victory points. The actual stories behind them are extremely simplistic though, and the main benefit is that they can shorten the busy work of finishing a game that you've already effectively won. Mechanically, it's sound, but it just furthers how bland and without identity Gal Civ 4 feels. The same is true with ideologies. Random events throughout the campaign will have multiple options and your selection can increase your empire's rank in specific ideology. You can then spend culture points as you get them to unlock perks in that ideology tree if you have the right level. But since there's no restrictions on picking even from opposing ideologies, you'll just be cherry picking whatever's mechanically best rather than what feels right for your empire. Role playing goes out the window because there are no drawbacks to being a complete hypocrite. The lack of identity boils down to hollowness and repetition. Each game plays out too similarly to the last, both mechanically and in the fiction. The random events that occur are extremely bland and repeat multiple times each game, so styling a unique story for your civilization felt futile. There's nothing here to match even the less than great campaigns of Gal Civ 3 to say nothing of excellent games like Stellaris or Endless Space 2. Perhaps the one aspect of Galactic Civilizations 4 that actually had some unique expression is the ship designer. Out of the box, most species have their own style of fully modular and customizable ships. If you jump into the editor, you can freely outfit its stats and abilities, but what's much more fun is being able to change up the look of it entirely as you see fit. Whether you want to design ships from scratch or just tweak the look of a cruiser that you didn't care for there's a wealth of options and tools to do so, but realistically, this is a specialized feature for a small subset of players. After completing a few campaigns, it's a real struggle to find reasons to come back to Galactic Civilizations 4 for another round. What few neat ideas it brings to the space 4X genre proves to be poorly implemented and ultimately uninteresting with promising features like sectors and galactic challenges missing the mark and feeling unfinished. Every option and playstyle inevitably blurs together into a galaxy-spanning land grab, and without flavorful writing to back it up, the tedious nature of that and its whack-a-mole warfare mean it'll be hard to remember having played Gal Civ 4 by year's end. Other 4X games have solved these problems more effectively and with more flair and identity. This leaves Galactic Civilizations 4 feeling barren, hollow, and in desperate need of a balance and polish pass. Which to be fair, Stardock has a respectable history of doing this with its games after launch. In its current condition, it's not particularly good or bad. It's just boring, soulless, and not up to par with other recent games in its style. For more, check out our reviews of Total War Warhammer 3 and Crusader Kings 3 The Royal Court. And for everything else, stick with IGN.